you for Christmas caroling so wonderfully already this morning. You are singing with the voice of angels. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the way your word works in our lives. And Lord, I just pray that you would continue to guide me now as I open your word. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us. And Lord, I pray that we would be able to hear it. Thank you, Lord, for being present with us. Now we loose your spirit among us. And as always, Lord, I pray that there would be oh so much more of you and so much less of me. Through Christ I come. Amen. You know, did you ever notice that around Christmas time, even music can become a distraction? You know, it's kind of like singing happy birthday to the wrong person. Who would do that? The irony is, songs that refer to Christmas don't even mention anything about Jesus. You know, there are just times that we just need to push the music aside. We need to push it out of our Christmas celebrations. We need to clear the distractions so that we can focus on Jesus. I hope they come to your house. Christmas Eve. Won't that be great? Friends, we need to remember that Jesus is the reason for the season, and this is the reason your point to ponder is this over on your bulletin, although you're probably so flustered. You know, just grab your bulletin. We're all okay again now. We're all okay again. You'll see the point to ponder. Is this the best Christmas music? Tells the story of Jesus. The best Christmas music tells the story of Jesus. You know, as early as 129 A.D., that's 129 years after Jesus was born, it is believed the first Christmas carols were sung by Christians. One was called The Angel's Hymn, and it echoed the song the shepherds heard the angels sing. And this song was passed along, I don't know, from shepherd to shepherd, to shepherd's family to shepherd's family, until Pope tele Telemorphus ordained it to be sung at Christmas Mass. Other carols, like the 4th century carol St. Hilary's of Pointiers composed, the Latin carol, Jesus Illuminates All. And the poet Prudentius wrote, God's love for his only son. Have you ever heard of those Christmas carols? You ever heard of them? Me neither. I've never heard of them. Part of the reason we've never heard of those carols is because at different points in Christian history, Christmas carols have been banned. Carols and other hymns were often based on secular tunes that people knew. And they were more upbeat and joyous. And many believed the church's holy days should be somber occasions and not celebrations. But you know, you can't ban Christmas joy. People continued to sing carols in their homes until the 1200s, when a man who invented the nativity scene, pop quiz, who invented the nativity scene? Oh, thank you so much, St. Francis of Assisi, that is correct. He started singing songs around his nativity scenes to tell the story. 
In fact, one of the oldest carols we can trace back is, is from the 1200s, and it's one you might have heard because it's still sung today. In fact, it was sung by Garth Brooks several years back. But I love the title, The Friendly Beasts. Did you ever hear this one? The Friendly Beasts. Jesus, our brother, strong and good, was humbly born in a stable rude. He, and the friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, strong and good. I, said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I carried his mother uphill and down. I carried his mother to Bethlehem town. I, said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I, said the sheep with curly horn. I gave him my wool for his blanket warm. He wore my coat on Christmas morn. I, said the sheep, shaggy and warm, with the curly horn. You can watch the rest of that song on YouTube if you want. But that's from the 1200s. Early on, Christmas carols were used to tell the story of Jesus in creative and interesting and beautiful ways. But they must always point us back to the real story. So let's turn right now and find the root of the angel's hymn. Find out where that sheep with curly horn came from. I'd like you to open your Bibles right now to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. I did check this morning to see if there were uh, you Bibles stationed on the ends of your pews. If you ran out this morning, forgot your Bible, it would be so good if you would just grab that Bible at the end of your pew. Somebody can pass one to you. We love it when God's people can open up His Word together. Of course, if you don't have a Bible, you can read and understand. Uh, we'd love for you just to take it. Just take it home. Merry Christmas. Consider it a gift from us to you. I'm in Luke chapter 2. I hope you got there. I'm in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Verse 9. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. That was so cool. And they were terrified. Oh, you won't do they were terrified again? They were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Verse 13. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. <clears throat> Verses 8 to 14. On your outline, the first carols and carolers were brought a message of joy and peace about Jesus. How have you been comforted by carols? How could you comfort someone else? Friends, this is an unimaginable scene. No matter how many times I read it or I see it in movies or descriptions of it, I take in, I'm not sure I can capture that moment. One angel brought the good news, let's not forget. God's people hadn't heard from him for 400 years. The prophets had gone silent. But now, there came good news. I want you to look really close at verse 10. Look really close at verse 10, because who is the good news for? Who is the good news for? Can you say it? All the people. And then, a Savior. What's a Savior? Someone who can help others to be saved, rescued from destruction, and brought into divine safety. That's a Savior. He's also called the Christ. What is a Christ? That's the Messiah, the King who was to come to rule over his people and the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord. What does that mean? What's a landlord do? They own it, right? This is the Lord, the owner of everything. He's come. This is Jesus who was and is and is to come. God has come down. Never fear. Jesus is here. The bottom line to those shepherds was this. 
you are no longer alone. This baby is a gift to you. That was born to you. That's what that means in verse 11. Then in verse 13, we have the heavenly host, literally the army of heaven, coming around to praise God. This is the song that launched a thousand songs, Joy to the World, Away in the Manger. And one of my personal favorites, Silent Night. Now I ask you to ponder, and I hope you do, how music has comforted you at Christmas. Here's how it comforted me. The year is 1990, and I'm all alone in Czechoslovakia on the Charles Bridge at midnight on Christmas Eve. I would went to live in Europe through an MCC, Mennonite Central Committee, program a little over a year after my younger brother was killed. I was running away from my grief and landed in the Netherlands for a year. Christmas was coming. And I had, off time, I had time off of work. And so I went to the train station in Amsterdam and just asked them if I could buy a ticket to the farthest place away they could give me. And that just happened to be Prague, Czechoslovakia. Now, by the way, that, for those of you sitting there going, well, it's the Czech Republic, Todd. Well, it wasn't then. They were still Czechoslovakia. And Prague is one of the most gorgeous old cities in all of Europe. But that doesn't matter. Because you see, I was lonely. And I wanted to run away from my loneliness. And again, I know that, that makes no sense, but I still did it. Consumed with sadness and missing home and my brother, I cried out to God. It was Christmas Eve on the Charles Bridge right around midnight. And I cried out to God. I said, God, where are you? Where are you? Because it's Christmas Eve and I'm not feeling it. I'm not seeing it. I'm not hearing it. And you know, friends, from the far end of the bridge, there came candles strolling onto the bridge. And I heard in English the carol silent night and those, those candles and then people just kept coming they kept coming right down right down the bridge until a couple dozen of them got to the middle of the bridge and they surrounded me and we kept singing Christmas carols and after a couple more I, I turned to one of them and I said who are you and they said well we're from the Canadian Embassy, and we just thought we'd go out and sing Christmas carols. And I just started to cry. We sang a few more carols, and they walked away. But you see, I had been visited by God that night. I was given the joy and the peace of Jesus, comforted by the very presence of God. How have you been comforted? by these carols. How can you comfort someone else? Let's go back to the Bible, verse 15. Verses 15 through 18, here we go. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Verse 17, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning him. What had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Verse 15 through 18, I hope you realize that the shepherds were moved by the music. The shepherds were moved by the music. What? effect does music have on you? What song is God sending you with this Christmas? Music is powerful. Did, did you know that? Music is powerful. 
Music can change your mood. It can stick in your mind. It can literally move you. The shepherds heard the word. They wanted to see Jesus, even though they had never seen this boy and probably thought the whole manger thing was a little bit weird. But they went on their trek to see Jesus. You see, they were moved by the music. I know some of the music you will hear will have you dreaming of a white Christmas. Some of the music will get you having a holly jolly Christmas. Maybe even get you rocking around the Christmas tree. But will any of the music move you towards Jesus? I hope so. The angels sent those shepherds packing they went and found Jesus, but I wonder, will you find Jesus? You don't need to go to a stable. You don't need to find a manger. He's waiting right here. He's waiting right now for you to find him because he's already found you. Now, you've heard and sung several songs that already point to him, but I just got to give you a few more. Uh, verse 3 of God rest ye merry gentlemen. Just listen to these. Fear not then, said the angel, let nothing you affright. This day is born a Savior of pure virgin bright. Listen to this. To free all those who trust in him from Satan's power and might. O oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Do you need freed today? Only one person can do it. What about Hark the Herald Angels Sing? I just got to give you verse 3 one more time. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Risen with healing in his wings. Light and life to all he brings. Hail the son of righteousness. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Who's your King? Who's your King today? Kanye West says Jesus is his King. I hope he's your King. Because that's who he is. Last song. I just got to give you a couple verses from It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Just listen. to This might be you. This might be you sitting here right now. Just listen to this Christmas carol because this might be for you. O oh, ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Look now, for glad the golden hours come swiftly on the wing. Rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. Just one more. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old, when with the ever-circling years shall come the time foretold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling, and the whole world give back the song, now which the angels sing. I hope music has moved you closer to Jesus this morning. Can I just ask you, would you just close your eyes? Would you just close your eyes? I know maybe if you've got a little one with you there, you would just want to close one eye, keep the other eye on him. But if you could close your eyes for just a moment and imagine this scene. A baby in a manger. A weary young mother and a fatigued but diligent father trying to care for his Little family, you arrived with the words of angels ringing in your head, describing the unlikely picture that you see right before you. Will you believe it? Will you put your faith in the little king that lies before you? Now in your mind's eye, Knowing what many of you know, keep looking. Keep seeing this baby who grew up 
did and said miraculous things that nobody ever did before. Spoke of a kingdom and invited all who would believe in him to be a part of it. God's kingdom, eternal and expanding. The religious powers of the day couldn't stand him, conspired against him, and just like Jesus said, had him killed. Unbeknownst to them, fulfilling Jesus' ultimate destiny as our sacrificial Savior of the world. Three days later, another angel arrived and announced that same baby who was born and laid in a manger, that same baby who was later laid in a tomb, got up from the tomb. I need to tell you, he's living today and coming back again. If you haven't opened your eyes, I would invite you to open them now. This is how we receive the angel's hymn. And have peace and favor of our glorious God. Friend, you need to know the baby that was born in a manger came to die so that we can be born again. Like the old song says, born that men no more may die, born to raise the son of earth, born to give them second birth. Jesus was born so we could be born again. The angels knew it. Do you? More than any other gift, you need to know, you need to receive Jesus this Christmas. We'll just do two more verses, then I'm going to let you go. Verse 19 and 20. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Last one over there on your outline. The song of joy and truth continues today. Are you pondering or praising today? How do you respond to the gift of Jesus? There are really two valid responses with the birth of Jesus. Mary had already received Jesus. In fact, she believed in Jesus before he was even born. That's faith. Woo! Then even more so after he was born. If you are a believer today, and you've known Jesus for a while, you know, it's okay to just take a quiet moment at Christmas and ponder in your heart what he's done for you. It's okay to be quiet and just think about Jesus and the gift that he is to you, the gift that he is to others, what he has done for you and what he has yet to do. Mary knew her journey with Jesus had just begun, but she knew that she was into it till the end. It's good to ponder that. But there is another response, and that's the response of the shepherds. They knew that something miraculous had just happened. They caught a glimpse of heaven, and they were excited about it. They wanted the whole world to know what had happened, and they weren't afraid to tell people. What they said, we can say, too, that indeed Jesus was born. This is a very simple application, and you've already been practicing that application this morning. What about Christmas caroling? You need to know that Christmas Eve, after our fantastic Christmas Eve uh, service, I will, once again, uh, invite people to go authentic Christmas caroling after the service. We'll go out to the highways and byways. In fact, we'll go wherever you want to go. Uh, if there are people you want to go carol to, we'll go carol them. We often pop into nursing homes or hospitals gas stations, wherever the Spirit leads us, we'll go sing. But you know what? You don't have to go with me. What would keep you from grabbing two or three people and saying, you know what? I know somebody who's, who's down this Christmas. Maybe we should go sing to them. You know, this is one of the years, this is 
one time of the year where you can actually go to people's houses and start singing and they, they won't call the cops. They won't throw stuff at you. Because they, they, it's Christmas caroling. Maybe you should do it. Maybe you should find some people and go do it. Or maybe you should come with me on Christmas Eve. Because see, if we believe it, we shouldn't be afraid to say it. We shouldn't be afraid to sing it. The angels announce His birth, but even more so that He is our Savior and Lord. That at Christmas we celebrate His birthday with joy because He is the eternal gift and the eternal giver of gifts. And friends, that's all we need. Would you pray with me again? Lord, I just thank You so much that You came down so long ago, but it's still fresh. It's still new. It's still powerful to hear the songs and indeed to sing them ourselves. But, Lord, we can't just keep them to ourselves. I pray that you would help us to share the song. Maybe indeed in singing, but perhaps at least in speaking. Lord, help us share the song. And we'll give you all the glory through it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.